Thank you, gentlemen, councilors, and uh, before we stand uh, on the silence, uh, I would ask everybody to please remember tonight what we're hearing all over the TV, the people of Turkey and northern Syria, and many of their relatives that are in this country, uh, you know, in, in a very uh, agitated uh, state. Uh, so please keep them in your thoughts and prayers tonight. We'll stand for a moment of silence. They better be able to do this in the county tonight. Thank you. <laughs> 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 right. Okay, and uh, so next we'll have our land acknowledgement. Uh, I want to uh, acknowledge that we're on the ancestral uh, territory of the Mi'kmaqi people, and we want to thank the uh, current residents of. Uh, the Grundy residents of our county, uh, for their uh, ancestors uh, sharing their land with our ancestors when they came four years or 400 years ago. Uh, we are all treaty people. Thank you. Now, the next uh, step is to have an approval of our agenda. Would somebody like to move? Second. 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 Dates. Now, for our minutes of January the 4th, uh, does anybody have any uh, corrections, errors, or omissions of those minutes? I have one myself, so I'll mention that now. Uh, where Tyler McLean presented and gave us a speech, uh, I think it should read, read that uh, Dr. gave his speech. He certainly didn't read it. It says Tyler read his speech and uh, I don't think he looked down once. He had it there in the back of mouth, but uh, maybe we, if we could just change that, that or gave his speech to council. Any other errors, corrections, omissions? Last time. Errors, omissions, or corrections. Okay, hearing none, I uh, will we'll declare those approved as presented. Uh, correspondence, uh, there's none requiring action. There are two pieces of correspondence, uh, one from uh, North Elba. Uh, thank you for the food uh, institute, from the food insecurity committee, and uh, the letter to do with the Glen Road. Uh, we had a presentation here back a few months ago from the Minister of uh, Public Works. And uh, if there's any questions on those letters, that would be the time, but uh, if not, we'll, they don't require any action. Okay. Uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Mary. Thank you. I just wanted to know that that was CC to um, the gentleman who came in and done the presentation. That was your reference. Yes. And if not, could it be? I think we, we discussed sending it to him. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we'll forward it. No, I don't think it was CC to him, but we can forward it to him. Thank you. He was representing the people on that road. Okay, uh, I don't see any other, so we'll move right along. And so tonight, uh, we're pleased to have, uh, we've had it the last uh, several years, uh, and I had to work our way through COVID there for a while, so we're pleased to have everybody back in the room again uh, with us uh, this year for the uh, proclamation uh, dining. Uh, somebody's keep track, please. So I'll read that proclamation here now, uh, recognizing Women's Institute Week, and uh, then we'll go into the center here and, and do the uh, signature of the resolution. Where is the Women's Institute organization it's celebrating 126 years in Canada? Whereas the first Women's Institute in Nova Scotia was formed in 1913, South Springs, Victor County. Whereas for 110 years, the Women's Institutes of Nova Scotia continue to provide women opportunities to improve the quality of life for families in their local and global communities through community service and involvement, education, and personal and leadership development. Therefore, be it resolved by the Municipal Council for the Municipality of the County of Pitco, the Council proclaimed the week of February the 19th to the 25th as Women's Institute Week in the Municipality 
dated at Victor, Nova Scotia, the 6th day of February, 2023. We'll now move to the center of the room, and uh, I forget now that no me of the two ladies were going to be doing the presentation. <laughs> I'm Danny White, <laughs> and I'm the president of the Victor County Women's Institute. And I'm Ruth Wortman, and I'm past president. And these are all our lovely members here. <laughs> Four <laughs> and eight. <laughs> Okay, so let's expand the room. I'm going to get a few ladies to the front. Now, let's sign. Let's sign. Yes. Oh, yeah, sign on that one. Okay. Um, I don't think it's going to be a simple shit. Let me look at him. Sit there. Sit there. Yeah. Members want to get in behind? Sure, please. Come on, ladies. Come on, ladies. Come on, ladies. Come on, Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Burger. Oh, burger. Just leading back straight behind. Oh, Perfect. Um, thank you. 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 Thank you.
And uh, so it was a great social uh, instrument at that time, as well as, uh, you know, health and safety of families. Uh, uh, but it's, you know, tool, as they call it. But nowadays, it still serves a lot of those same purposes, but people are able to communicate much better. They're able to get around and everything. But uh, as COVID proved, I mean, us, we have a need. We have a need to get together. We have a need to socialize. We have a need. To, it gives an opportunity to educate them as well. And education has always been a big part of the of this year. But it's uh, with some pride, too, that we look at, you know, the first one in Nova Scotia, the first one in Nova Scotia was in Salt Spring right here in our own, uh, in our own county. Uh, so, again, thank you very much for uh, bringing it to attention each year. And we'll remember that week, February 19th, the 25th. Uh, and I'm sure we'll see some pieces in the paper and whatnot, uh, highlighting some of the activities and whatnot that, uh, that you're involved with. But uh, keep up the good work. Uh, our family is as good as it is because of all the volunteers and all the groups that are out there, including yours, that uh, keep promoting good things in our communities. Uh, we can sit here and pass all the laws and bylaws we want, but if it's not for the people that are doing things every day, making things happen in our communities, then they wouldn't be the independent they are. So, and uh, the deputy warden wanted me to remind everybody that the majority of the places that are here are from District 5. <laughs> yeah. You want to get that in there. Uh, but again, thank you very much for coming and uh, we look forward to having you in there. Okay, now we're moving on to uh, probably a first in this uh, council. Uh, so there's a first since I've been here, and uh, Brian's been here a little longer than me, Wayne's been here forever, uh, but uh, <laughs> I don't know if or not, but uh, the first, it's a first for him. To, the first time we've uh, had the privilege to uh, recognize a dog in our uh, chambers. Uh, so we're looking forward to uh, a good speech here. Don't be delayed to come. I've been to be uh, careful. It's a, it's a he I'm referring to? <laughs> she. Okay. Good thing. That's pretty good. All right. I, I have a, a bit to read here first before we make the presentation. <laughs> So during the early morning hours of December the 12th, 2022, Liam Green and his wife, Renee Kilburn Green, were woken by their 18-month-old German Shepherd, Athena, that there was danger, telling them that there was danger near them. The couple had recently purchased the Waterside home and were settled in for the evening. Liam woke when he heard Athena whining in the kitchen. Liam told the picture advocate that Athena usually sleeps in their bedroom. So it was strange that she was not there, and even stranger that she was upset in the middle of the night. When he went to find her, he spotted the fires on their front porch. Liam tried to extinguish the flames, but uh, doesn't hear. But anyway, Liam and Renee were treated for smoke inhalation and were taken to the hospital for further treatment. The credit Athena was saving them from a much worse situation. On behalf of Council for the Municipality of Mexicana, we want to thank Athena for being a devil letters good dog and alerting her owners to the fire. Her heroic ways have captured the hearts of many in our county and show once again how special it is to have pets in our life. Again, uh, congratulations to Athena and uh, I thank you that Liam and Renee are still with us. So we'll now make the uh, presentation and some treats for <laughs> That's why she didn't like it. Oh, Yeah, <laughs> 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 
right, now everybody's going to look really big more ugly things. Perfect. <laughs> Lovely. Cool. Hey, that's all we need, folks. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I was just informed uh, by Brother Dave that May is the daughter of our former counselor, Lori Jones. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Thank you very much uh, for coming in with Athena. Thank you. Uh, uh, we, need, we need more good news stories. This is something like that. Okay, let's stand with the thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we now have uh, Um, so uh, we're we're a little early. Uh, whatever we said with twenty, we're a little early for our dangerous and unsightly uh, uh, presentation here, and so we're going to leave that and uh, we'll go on to our resolutions. So, Councillor Turner, if you're ready, uh, we'll go with the recreation startup grant and sale and every recreation. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Be resolved. By the Municipal Council for the Municipality of the County of Tico, the Council approved and paid to follow the Municipal Grants, Recreation Startup Grant, District 7, Salem Area Recreation Association, $350 operating expenses, dated at Victor, Nova Scotia, the 6th day of February 2023, signed by myself, Councilor Larry Turner, seconded by Councilor Peter Boyles. Oh, second. We say yes to the you did have seven, seven. seven. You did say seven, but I heard seven. Okay. Okay. Seven. Okay. Uh, all right. You've heard the reading of the resolution. Are there any uh, questions on that? The uh, start of grand resolution. Not uh, a call for the vote on that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All the carry. Yeah, we have a grant extension request. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> and now Thank you, Mr. Morton. Resolution be it resolved that the municipal council and the municipality of the county of Hector that the council approves the extension of the following municipal grants. Municipal thirds. District number six, Salem Presbyterian Church, 2500. Extension of time to the January 31st, 24, for hall renovations. District number seven, the overall area community center three hundred and seven dollars and ninety cents extension of time January thirty first twenty four for purchase of the new battery. Dated the effect of NS the sixth day of February two thousand and twenty three signed by the South Council which is the board and second of the council of So second. Thank you. 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 Th
Okay, uh, you read the reading and resolution then for the extension of those uh, grants. Move to second. Uh, any question on that or the motion? Okay, seeing your hearing on, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Carry. Now we'll move on to Councilor Elliott to look after uh, the one to do with our new building intern appointment. Thank you. A resolution whereas the municipality recently invited applications for the position of building intern and Cody Avery was a successful applicant. Therefore, be it resolved by the municipal council for the municipality of the county of Picto. The council approved the appointment of Cody Avery as building intern for the municipality, dated at Picto Nova Scotia the sixth day of February of 2023. Moved by myself, Councilor Mary Elliott, and then seconded by David. Well, seconded. Uh, you heard the uh, reading of the resolution to do with the uh, appointment of Cody as our new uh, building intern appointment. Uh, are there any questions on that resolution? Councilor Dave Parker, go ahead. I just want to comment Cody's appointment through the mind, a fine young man. His mother's appointment through the mind, a lovely young woman. And his father works in the meeting with 17, so I know that he comes from real good stuff. So, I'm going to get a good appointment here. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to hear that somebody's. Grandmother was also like a I'm going for great grandmother. <laughs> okay. Uh, any questions on that uh, appointment or that uh, resolution? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Gary. And now, uh, Councilor Dean Park will give the uh, municipal tax exemption um, changes for 2023 2024. Uh, thank you, Mr. Warden. It's been a great pleasure to move this particular motion. Resolution be resolved by the Municipal Council for the Municipality of County of Picto. The Council adopts the following policy with respect to low income tax exemptions. Policy number 2023 02 06. Municipality of County of Picto, low income tax exemption policy. In accordance with the provisions of Section 69 of the Municipal Government Act, in Chapter 18 of the Statutes, of Nova Scotia, 1998. Municipal Council for the Municipality of County of Pickle hereby enacts the following policy with respect to low income tax exemption. One, this policy income shall be defined, Section 691 of the Municipal Government Act, as defined Section 611 of the Municipal Government Act. It means a person's total income from all sources for the calendar year preceding the fiscal year of the municipality. And includes the income of all other members of the same family residing in the same household, but does not include an allowance paid pursuant to the War Veterans Allowance Act of Canada or pension paid pursuant to the Pension Act of Canada. Two, an exemption from taxation in the amount of not exceeding $250 shall be granted for a person assessed with respect to taxable property in the municipality of the county of Picto, who is a resident of the municipality. And his income from all sources for the year preceding the year for which the exemption is sought is less than $30,000. Three, the exemption extends only to property occupied by the applicant as his or her principal residence. Four, a person applying for an exemption shall make an affidavit affirming the person's income. Five, the deadline for filing an application for a low income tax exception shall be March 31st annually. <coughs> Repeal all former policies with respect to low income tax exceptions. Hereby repeat, they did affect the NS. This is the sixth day of February 2023. Moved by myself, Councillor David Prior, second by Councillor Mary Woodridge Elliott. So seconded. Okay, you heard the uh, reading of our municipal tax exemption, which has been uh, increased uh, from what it was last year, both uh, in, in the amount. Uh, and in the uh, the amount of uh, the amount of the exemption, and also in the amount of income, uh, you know that you have to be uh, low before you can uh, be applicable for this. Uh, so as we move to the second, are there any questions uh, or any uh, comments on that resolution? Hearing none, uh, we we'll call the vote. We'll call those in favor. Aye. 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 I still have a couple of minutes to go. I think we'll move on to number 11 and then come back to our hearing. 
so uh, I asked Councilor Boyles to uh, comment on uh, these uh, rig dry starts that you run on before. Yes, uh, what it is, it's uh, if you can. You know, we got the uh, third February second, uh, 2023. Uh, EV notes. Uh, there's quite an article in about it, uh, and it was one of the uh, the girls that uh, or ladies that came to me, Colleen uh, uh, over uh, on it. Uh, numerous phone calls on these, and and what has happened was the when you when they called in for the register for these grants, you couldn't understand the people on the phone. I mean, they they just Sport. They were talking to another uh, language that people just didn't understand. And but anyway, then when they they went up, some of them went up to uh, to get their five hundred dollars. They were told, "No, you, uh, you you didn't answer the questions right." And what what everybody was told that the uh, uh, the criteria was that if you your power was off twenty four hours or more, if you lost food. Uh, in, in, in it, and, and uh, so the, the and any damage, but the, the two, there were two uh, top uh, criteria for getting it. Well, there's all kinds of people that went and, and, and lost this register and went up and they were denied their $500. And they were, they were quite upset, upset over it. Like one woman, she turned around and, uh, and it's in this article where she turned around and she helped her neighbor. Uh, Go online and, and do it, and then got her own online, and she was rejected, and 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 uh, her neighbor was accepted. It's just it's just ludicrous. So I went to Sean Fraser's office to have a talk to him about an appeal. How do you appeal this? I mean, there got to be an appeal if it's if it's you know taxpayers' money that's going up there for this five hundred dollars that was given to the Red Cross to do it. Why why isn't there an appeal that where they could find out at least why they didn't get it or? Well, we don't know. We'll have to check into it. Well, nothing's ever come out of that. And and again, there's a lot of people. And it's not only here in Victor County. I mean, it's it's all over. That that it's on the the news the next day after we brought it up here. It was on the news in 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 uh, in Cumberland County and and in Halifax and everything that this is happening. This is this is just not right. But it's happening. It's happening to 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 our residents and and, and other and. Uh, I'd like, to, I'd like to see us uh, I'd like to make a motion that uh, you know we write a letter to the uh, uh, you know to, to the uh, uh, the Sean Fraser and, and I'd like to see us write a letter to you know one or two of the uh, the, uh, the the opposition leader or someone and find out what the criteria was and and if people were you know were uh, were supposed to get this because there's something wrong and and is there some kind of uh, uh, you know uh, where you can can go and and put a you know an appealing. It, it just don't seem to be happening. So I think I think to turn around and make a motion that we we uh, you know write to uh, Sean Fraser's office and also turn around and to uh, I think uh, one of the oppositions. It wouldn't matter which one it is. Turn around with it's you know we go with the the group the indie people we go with and and ask them what their uptake is on this, how it's supposed to work, and who was supposed to get it. And, and and find out again if, if there's uh, if there's some way that this can be appealed because you think people shouldn't be going out. I mean, the, the people just don't, don't have it. That's being hurt by this. And just in fairness, would you like to send a letter perhaps to all three uh, political leaders in Nova Scotia, not just the opposition leaders? Yeah, that'd be, that'd be great. I think it might be seen as being but less political. Well, it's just be federal, right? Eh? Oh, you want to jump in? Oh, it's federal. It's a federal grant. Yeah, I, I misunderstood you. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, if I say Sean Fraser would be our representative, I guess here. And uh, but I'd like to see you go to to uh, you know uh, I don't know if you if we put it to 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 put one for Trudeau and ask him or uh, yeah Trudeau and ask him. Uh, but I think there should be something from the opposition to tell us what their outlook is on it. It is we're supposed to go this way that way. Because what we don't know, and, and nobody seems to be able to tell us. And John Frazier is their MP, a representative with, yeah. like, with uh, one party, and so you're suggesting that it go to the other two parties as well. Right. Uh, to the leaders of those parties. Uh, 
I don't think we'd have to send one of the prime minister too, because you're sending one too. Well, exactly. Okay, I need a seconder then in order to move that motion ahead. I'll second that. Okay, uh, seconded by Councillor Rapino. Uh, and uh, did you have a, a question, Councillor Elliott, or were you going to second it there? Okay. Uh, and did you want to speak, Councillor Rapino? Uh, please go ahead. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Warren. I guess my thinking on this is that, you know, so many uh, Canadians across the country donated to the Red Cross for this, and then it was matched uh, by the government um, for this for our residents that suffered during the hurricane in Iraq. Fiona, thank you. And uh, I think it's important that, you know, there's some accountability for that um, and making sure you know, but money was going, people that were applying for it, that it was going to those who needed it. And, you know, if somebody was denied, they should have a, an understanding of why they were denied. Um, and, you know, sometimes there's mistakes made in applications and, and such. So I think it's important to be looked at and, and what an appeal process can be done. But, but first and foremost, there's so many Canadians that gave money out of their own pocket and matched by the government. So first and foremost, that's, that's my reasoning for supporting the motion. Okay, uh, Councillor Warren. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm, I'm doing support of the motion, but I do think a copy should go to the Red Cross as well because they're the ones distributing the funds. So I don't think it's uh, right to send it to the government alone. I think that the answers would come from the Red Cross. So I think that's where we should. I'm looking over inside here. Yeah. Okay. A copy will go to the Red Cross. That's only, only appropriate. Uh, any other questions or comments uh, then on the motion? Okay, hearing none, we'll go for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, yes. Motion carried. Okay, so we'll start with number 11. Now, now we're going to go backwards because we're at 734. Uh, so we have a, a dangerous and unsightly uh, hearing tonight. Uh, bring up the uh, names here uh, in the Thorburn area. Uh, Harold Nargo and Alan Nargo, uh, and the uh, occasion is 438 uh, Thorburn Road. Uh, so who's going to give us the um, details on that dangerous site? Certainly, Pam. Okay. Uh, just so the point of clarification, are we talking about? We're actually talking about two properties, 438 and 436. Um, we're going to do them together then? There are duplex. They'll have to be processed separately, separate property. Separate owners? Or? No, it's the same owners, but separate PIDs. Okay. Uh, well, they went whatever way it feels appropriate, but we did. I think we can speak to both of them. Yeah, we need the details on it for council to make a decision. Yes, we've had this, uh, this on our dangerous, this property on our dangerous, to say that it's for quite a while. At first, it was deteriorating most of the but then. Fiona and other brother pets. Um, it's severely deteriorated. The whole side of the house is uh, made multiple attempts to contact the owners. Uh, here back. They were apparently under one of the they don't the property. Uh, so, given the state of the building, uh, the state of its deterioration, it's, it's missing an entire. Uh, the front wall and then the side wall. Um, we had a well on six months ago today just to confirm that no improvements had been made. Uh, there's also an accessory building that's falling down. Um, and we uh, we recommend that. Well, I guess we, um, that's that's the nature of the deterioration of the, of the properties. We think that they're beyond the inherent at this stage. Okay, uh, so is there any uh, questions uh, for uh, Logan at this point? Go ahead, Councilor Turner. Is there any pictures, Logan, that we can have a look at? Uh, we do have pictures from today that um, I'm, perhaps I can forward them to Brian if that's helpful. Um, and our team circulated them or open them up or something like that. Um, Okay, we can go ahead and twist another question. Uh, I'll, I'll leave it to Councilor Turner to receive if there's a technical way to do that. 
And uh, we'll go to Councillor Boyle. Same, same question. Oh, same question anyway. Okay. Uh, Councillor Dean Fair. This is a question for Roland. If he knows, thank you, Mr. Warden. Uh, do you know how long it's been since these properties, either of them, were occupied? It's been several years. We don't know the exact time frame. Um, it's the daughter of the property owners that um, that we have been in contact with, um, but I don't believe I have been occupied for a number of years. There's no chance of any of living there. You. Know? <laughs> okay, if you have any, uh, go ahead, Councillor Brown. It's not on that, this property. This property is vacant for 10 to 15 years. I think it was 2008 the last time it was occupied. Okay. It, it wasn't an unsightly, but it was, it was a vacant property that we probably should have sold at a tax sale many years ago. But over the years, there was no lot of people in anything like that. And the owner took half the roof off. Then we had a windstorm. We just saw a wave on a Wednesday. So the side wall up. So it's it's an eyesore. It's dangerous. People are getting not numerous calls of having this place still now. So I think it's time that we get in there. Once you see the pictures, you're at no no doubt. Are there neighboring properties or any close to it? Yes. Yeah. And they're within. Okay, um, I, uh, I know Brian's working on see if he can get these pictures for us. Is there any other questions uh, in the meantime? Uh, he's working on that, or uh, if not, we're going to move on to the, uh, to the resolution, but I want to wait and see if he can get these up or not. That's for the wheels. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, yeah, John, what else, Gary? Oh, I, I just wonder if the uh, was uh, contacted and do they have anything on whether they were contacted or shown that? Uh, well, that we can handle that. Uh, thank you. Yes, the, the property owners uh, were contacted uh, and we, we did make contact with them. Uh, they have been challenging to make contact with them, but, but they haven't been notified. They had been challenging earlier in the process to make contact with them, but they haven't been notified. And they had the opportunity to be here tonight. Um, and yeah, they, they've had the opportunity. They didn't realize the process what we're going through. That's correct. And they've shown no, no uh, objection to any process thus far. Okay. And the uh, way this works, I think, if I'm right, is that we take the building down once we pass this resolution and then, then it's put toward uh, that tax account. The cost of, of doing that. Yeah, and uh, so it's not necessarily paid by the county. It's uh, paid, you know, it, it goes to the tax bill of the uh, people that are home and property. So there's a pretty good picture, yeah, that uh, lines up with what about what we've been told with the sign missing. It's just that the roof is missing too. So. Oh, go ahead, Randy. I just want to mention, I did also have a call from our model and he was surprised that the house was still in his name many, many years that they left that property and it supposedly been turned over to the bank. So, oh, I see. And apparently they didn't put it in their name. So that's, he's, he did, wasn't known how here to make this, his, his feelings were he doesn't own the property. Well, given the property, not the start, but he, he thinks the bank owns it. Uh, thank you, Mr. Warren. Then, just to follow up to um, Councillor Palmer's question there, if if the gentleman thought the bank owned this and he was taken back from possession by a bank, has the bank been notified? That's because, because there should, if the bank um, now has possession of it and it's not updated and it, it, it is it the bank's property, but the paperwork hasn't been updated. Is that the issue, or? Thank you. Um, we completed a title search, which will show the properties to be named. So, yeah. Does that answer your question, sir? Well, yes, no. I mean, 
did the bank just not do its due diligence and and not do paperwork on it but remains possession? I mean, I, I just want to know that if we tear this down, that the bank isn't there isn't any legal repercussions. Fifty percent of them notice the bank would have been notified as an interest in the property right. because right. they have an interest yeah. in the property, so they would be notified. Yeah, that's anybody, what I'm saying. Anybody that has an interest in the property is notified of it here. Okay, yeah, no, that's what I was asking. Just the bank was they're they're aware of the process. Okay, thank you. Some of those pictures, but thank you, Mr. Gordon. I know that there's no oil bank there. So if we move towards demolition, will there be special steps taken to ensure that it's handled according to the current environment? Thank you. Yeah, no, when we go through the demolition process, we'll uh, soon we go to that point. Uh, we would tender it our law enforcement officer would issue considerations for environmental environmental compliance with Thank you. Thank you. If they were aware that uh, they were in possession of that property, uh, where did the tax bills go? We would send tax bills to them. If they not to pay for the last eight to ten years. The property is still in the novel state. The bank only has a recorded interest in it. No, oh, with the tax bill so signed to the tax bill signed to the house. Says we would go to the home. They just have to pay in the money. They didn't. One of those ones that are on that list that you're so they should have known they own property if they didn't want to be sent to tax bill. They should have been aware that they still had to pay orders that they were sent to the bill. So they're, 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 they're rationalization for not knowing this. The gate was an element of No, I understand that, but just logically. Yeah. You're logical, but uh, sometimes they, they say they're still logical. No, I understand that. And Thanks. And it is not uncommon for financial institutions not to uh, follow through on it. It's like that's a regular occurrence, like they'll just. Let it flow, right? Yeah. It, it's, it's not uncommon that that, it, yeah. that happens more of the other way. Thank you. Yeah, we're going to move the rest of the time. Go ahead, Councilor Joe. Thank you, Mr. Miller. So, what is old about the paper right now? There'll be silver on that tool, or no silver? Never hope that. How much are you asking me about that? Don't have any impact. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And they really don't impact what we're going to do at all. Yeah. Okay, but I I want to know what what impact because it's what it's all about that that would be added into the taxes for them. Hmm? How much taxes are owed? The taxes are far more than what the property's worth. Yeah. So that's why nobody would. Buy it at tax sale, we put off the taxes because the amount of tax is almost far greater than what the property value would be. Because that's why the bank would be up to us. I mean, like, is that another place like what I had in Eureka that there's 33,000 old on it because it wasn't sold and still not sold? Is that the kind of money that it's sold on that place? I mean, we don't have those figures. Sometimes when I'm here, you don't have those figures, but it's not going to change our road any tonight. I'm tearing it down. But the matter, but it is going to mean that the uh, cost of tearing it down will probably fall in the municipality because there's a far more tax than going now than what uh, what's going to get paid. Obviously, then we're left with uh, a piece of empty land, whatever the empty land might be. <laughs> That's all I was trying to find out. We're never going to come out of that either. No, I don't believe it. Thank you. Taxes, but it's still the right thing to do for the neighbors and for the local county in general. Uh, so I think we're ready to move ahead with the resolution and let you have that come from. Yeah. Thank you. Work. Resolution is resolved and this council from this county to county pick. Council finds the property located at 436 Thornton Road, Thornton Pass account number 0. 
340565 and further described in the task order and its dangers at site. And be it resolved by the that council pursuant to the section 346, part 15 of chapter 18 of the Acts of 1998, the Mr. Governor Act. Make an order to inform the task here to inform part of the resolution. The order the set order signed and issued forwarded on behalf of the council by the chief administrative officer of the municipality or necessity. Dated Pickman, Old Scotia, the 6th day of February 2023, by myself, Pastor Randy Fowler, second by Pastor Andy Hobbs. So seconded. Okay, they uh, heard the reading of the resolution to uh, demolish the uh, property on Thurman Road, uh, as we described before, 438 Thurman Road. Uh, and there's a, I think you mentioned the number of days there. There's down the lower first 30 days, I think, to have been something about it. Uh, Okay, uh, so we'll now move to the discussion part and I'll let uh, Councilor Palmer go first. Just, just on this property, just in case, no. A lot of those homes on that road share well, but I'm not sure about this property. Some of them are, are real well, so some of them are properties, right? So if there is a well on this property, you just want to make sure that it is secure by the municipality before moving. Not damaged. Well, not damaged, but it's that it's not a hazard. Yeah. A kid drop on falling into the room, whatever. You just gotta make sure of it. And I'm not sure if there's well on this front. Just wanna make sure that when we do clean it up, that if there is crops there, that it is secure so that and it could be feeding somebody else's house too. We have to be worried about it. Okay, I think Mr. McDowell was making some notes of that. The uh be careful uh, in terms of wells, whether it be for the sake of other people uh, being on the same well, or uh, as Councilor Thomas said, for the sake of uh, whoever happens to be around the property. Uh, Councilor David Hart. Well, Councilor Palmer read that. I only heard. I only heard the number four thirty-six. Is that? Yeah, there's another one. So, <laughs> this appears to be one of the old miners' home duplexes. That was put in with there. It's a hundred. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions on the resolution? If you're done, we will vote on that. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Motion carried. So we'll now leave that with our department uh, of public works. So, uh, uh, so uh, another resolution. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. That's the other. Yeah. I, I, I know what you're getting there now. Go ahead. Okay. Resolution. Resolved on this step. Council, Council County, the Council of County Pepper, the Council of Pines Project located at 438 Thornton Road, Thornton Tax Count 03400565, further described in the detached order, it's dangerous and unsettled. And be resolved that Council results persuaded to Section 346 of Part 15 of Chapter 18 of the Acts 1998, this will govern that. Make an order with the form attached here to informing part of the resolution. The order be signed and issued for with on behalf of the council by the chief administrative officer, officer or of the municipality or his designate. Dated Hector Osos, the 6th day of February 2023, moved by myself, Councilor Randy Baller, and seconded by Councilor Amy Fowles. So seconded. Okay, here's the uh, resolution for the other half of that duplex. Like, yes, it is, but uh, the area makes it the same. Uh, does anybody have any comments? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Or I don't think there's a third pair to this one. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, and uh, that will be looked after appropriately. I'm sure our department of public works at this point. It'll be another high score gone from our county. Uh, keep on working on these. So maybe get the place cleaned up someday. Um, now, uh, okay, you're switching to Frank's presentation now? Okay, and we'll come back to those other two that are left. So we have with us uh, tonight, as we mentioned at our planning session a few weeks ago, and I think Jeff was the only one that wasn't here then, uh, or wasn't there then, and, uh, but uh, everybody else is aware, and I think Jeff might have been made aware, uh, that uh, we, we looked at the idea of having uh, 
Those were uh, about the halfway term or, or halfway mark of this uh, term of government, the other four year term. That it would be a good idea, perhaps, for us to uh, have a bit of a visioning or planning or whatever session you want to call it to uh, look at where, where to from here for the next two years. And hopefully, then for a future council, uh, you know, based on what their wishes are, uh, that there'll be. Uh, so some visioning of where we're going or what's important in the county here for the time of next. Uh, we, we've been uh, working very hard on the high speed internet project now for six years, and we've uh, still got a long ways to go with the service of uh, all of our residents. It is sort of on a track now where it can, uh, other than us monitoring it at various meetings, it can move on on its own. It doesn't require a lot of our uh, time at this uh, point, at this interval. So uh, we're looking at where do we go for the next two years then, and planning beyond that. Uh, so that the idea was uh, Frank uh, has worked with us. Frank Land uh, here with us tonight is commanding uh, Ganesh just across the, the border uh, and worked with us before on recreation. So some of you uh, will remember him from helping with our current recreation plan. Uh, and uh, he's going to talk to us briefly tonight uh, about uh, how he sees this sort of unfolding, maybe, and uh, then uh, he, he, he'll explain the rest of it. He did explain briefly to uh, Brian Wayne and I uh, the other day as to how he thought it might unfold, but we wanted all counselors to have some input into that and see if that's uh, the type of thing they want or if they want something different, uh, then now's the time to speak up. So, uh, Frank, uh, I'm going to open it up to you and uh, Speak to counselors about what uh, your thoughts and ideas are to use in this uh, process. Thank you, Morton. Good evening, Evelyn. Nice to see many of you again. Uh, real pleasure to come in and talk to you about this. As I sat and just listened to you for the last 15, 20 minutes, I said, my gosh, it'd be fun just to try to like, be married to one of you. <laughs> <laughs> David, right? <laughs> but it's uh, I was just thinking, you know, when you try to envision something together with one other person, so that's if you're married and love each other, then it's a journey, but you, you work it out, right? When there's this many of you, I'm trying to get some advice and shared perspectives on that over two years, if not multiple years. I think, uh, I think when Robert called up, I said, That's a nice challenge, that'll, that'll be fun. Uh, Darla, do you think that's going to be twice? Probably ups and downs. Ups and downs. <laughs> how, uh, I'm going to ask you for a second. How influential, like how much can I influence you? How much can one of these guys influence you when you influence them? Because I haven't seen you for a little while. Is it easy to influence each other or are you hard to get through yet? Andy, what do you think? I influence you? That's what it is. <laughs> oh, it does. That's what it is. I had to so it's good. Good thing. I hope for it. It's not good. I don't. That's well. That's very fair. You see, my wife came to me. I'm going to tell you a couple of very short stories, and then I'll explain the process, and we'll talk a little bit about your input on how we might might do this. Stuff. I'm 58 now. And whether you're a little above or a little below that doesn't matter. But I was relaxed, and geez, you know, Donna was saying that my wife, ten years away from retirement, if I finish at 60. He goes, you're healthy. You're doing fine. She goes, she goes, I get an idea. I said, what's that idea? She goes, I'd like you to spend a good chunk of our retirement money buying a piece of land to protect it. Just so that it's good for climate change and biodiversity. She goes, then you can work longer. Robert, I said, well, how much do you want to spend? And where is it? And all of a sudden, well, we went to it. She thought it was a good idea. And she influenced me that it was a good idea. But David, I'm going to work now for multiple more years. I mean, you come back and see you here if you're still here when I'm still here. I've got a couple of pieces of land in mind. <laughs> I don't need more. I can come in on this uh, But you know, it feels really neat to walk on a piece of land that got totally smashed by Fiona. And it did. Just when we were buying it, Fiona hit us. My wife said, We're buying the land, we're not buying the trees. And we spent a lot of time cleaning it up, milling the wood, making sure nothing went to the dump and nothing got burned. I mean, it felt really good process. But it, this idea of good 
is I want to invite you into a process um, that will help us look at where you may go over the next two years. Uh, and, and Robert and Wayne and Brian, when we talked, they said, you know, once we start opening up this conversation, we may as well look at beyond your term. And for those of you that return, what might be the things that might come next? Because often when you start something that's bigger than just two years, there we get through something bigger than two years. Not hard to do that, is it? Um, so first of all, before you even go into the process, what, what does a visioning process mean for you? You don't really think of visioning. Like we were just talking about this house being demolished. And let's say my wife and I, David, we're going to go buy that land after it's all flat again. Well, it's kind of fun to envision a property. Many of you have probably envisioned a property of what you want it to look like. So Peter, when you think of visioning, what do you think of? I just should say to see what the future's going to bring, what it's going to be. Okay, who's got a magic uh, crystal ball? Mary, you got a crystal ball to figure out what the future's going to be? Speaking about me or him? You first. About council or my life? <laughs> <laughs> Let's say both. Well, for council, uh, do the best I can for the people right now and right. see what happens when it turns out. I'm talking about predicting that future. Like what do we need? Oh, we need a lot of change. Okay, that's that's Feels interesting better. for me to hear. A lot of change. You don't need a lot of change or status quo. It's change. No, we need some change. Be some change or a lot of change. Don, what do you think? Deborah, you're next, please. I'm thinking that uh, I'm. I guess I'm going to ask you. Will this process that involves strategic planning as well? No, I've been asked not to come in and do strategic strategic planning right now. Unless you guys end up arguing with Robert, right? Then I'm okay. I'm here. I can do both. But I'm, I'm just thinking have... that you know, if you're going to be visioning, do you have a strategic plan as well? Uh, or do you need a that may be a secondary step, but right now we're going to try to figure out where we're going into that future, right? Um, and once you figure out some of the vision, then I think a strategic plan often comes not far behind. Because if you want that vision to become a reality, here you need some goals. Right, to help us get there. Yeah. Deborah, what do you think about predicting that future? No, but do you have a sense of your citizens and in, in the county? Like what, what do they need? I think it's still discussing it. I think we get a better handle on what we're trying to discuss with the private group. We're just doing what we can do somewhere in the And me too. Steve, my job's not to come up with the vision for you. I'm going to have to take you through a process and then we're going to discuss it. Okay. And other thoughts? What's the vision? Team. Team players. Team players? Yeah. Everybody on the same team. So, in the sense of trying to get a, <laughs> a little bit more shared vision for that, for that next two years. Don't take anything personal. Do your job in here for the people, and when you walk out, it's over. Start it new again. So if we can all agree upon what's good, then that'll feed that shared vision. Yeah. Team members always work, even in, in, if, you, if you're employed by someone. Yeah. If the group don't get along, and there's one rotten apple, it ruins it for everybody. You got to be able to work together regardless of where you are, even in, in the home, in your home. You got to function in the home as a team, too. So. I get moved over by the kids once in a while. It's great That's fun. not right. right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for your luck. No, but if it's you try to do the teaming, which means sometimes you have to live with it, right? Because you're trying to create something together. That's humor, right? I spent 30 years doing it. I get to see it a lot. Right? Other thoughts on visioning? What comes to your mind? I'll tell me, Frank. I guess in my mind, I said we look at what we did for the last six years, spent a lot of time on, on the high speed internet project. Yeah. And that was about trying to make our county a better place to live. Uh, without the high speed internet in, in a lot of our areas, they were just going to go down. Yeah, they, they weren't going to thrive because when people come in buying new homes, if there's not high speed internet in your area, so we near the has it. And so I think we need to look at our, our whole rural population, our whole rural county, and uh, look at what is it we can do to make it a better place for people to live whether they're in their senior years or whether they're a new couple just starting out or in their middle-aged uh, life. So the internet was one thing that we needed. 
But one other thing, we talked about transportation somewhere out here. We talked about various things that will make it a better place to live. We don't want everybody to have to move to Halifax or have to move in with the bus or something. We want them to stay in the county if that's where they want to live. We want them to be able to stay there. So whether it's recreation or or fire service or whatever things that are provided for people, people want to live in rural areas very much do, but they uh, need more services than they did uh, in the 1920s. And that's what the internet was about. Now we need to move to the next stage. What more can we do in our county to make it a better place people want to stay in and want to move to? That, that's sort of my idea of this thing. Fair enough, very good. I have a note down here on the document I'll leave you to take home tonight. But it just says people want to love where they live, mostly, right? I got to want to move to British Columbia or Alberta. I'm not moving to Ontario. Nice to live in North Sochi, right? You want people to live right here. Where... So one of the things I've set up is that I've set up seven questions for you. So I'm going to hand that out to you tonight. And I'll email it to you all as well so that you'll have an electronic copy. And uh, I'm going to ask you to reflect on some questions. Nothing too complicated, but simple things like uh, what do you deeply value? What do you, hold, what do you hold important when you think of yourself and you think of the citizens? Okay. Like obviously, if we thought of high speed internet, they wouldn't have thought of that 50 years ago. Right? So there's new things we need to be thinking about. Uh, and I asked uh, Robert. What was sort of the three or four big problems uh, that could be hitting this county in the next number of years? In, in a sense of what he said. Climate change. We're dealing with all the stuff that we've never dealt with before. Climate change. You guys got hit by that, did you? I would say. See, I've been talking about climate change for 25 years. My wife and a bunch of women that she's been hanging out with talking about climate change for 40 years. How can people just talking about that now? David, what's going on? There's a lot of skeptics. All with the others, and they have a lot of influence. Yeah, uh, I think for well, many, Fiona changed that. Oh my God, this is the. Oh, that was we got clobbered. We got clobbered. It was our turn. Well, right. I don't know. I don't know what turns, but we got clobbered. Yeah. <laughs> We have to, and I've said this all my life, is that right? I don't like it. Uh, we have to work at developing a stronger land ethic. Land ethic. Land ethic. Okay. People that own that land yeah. uh, need to see it. Need to see its potential. Yeah, that's going to be it's easy. more than just saying, well, I've inherited from my grandfather. I had the contract for XY said, go over and flatten the front <laughs> A passive advantage. It's a lot more than that. Yeah. But we haven't, that's never been, uh, it's never been below it. So, uh, so I've got seven questions for you. Then I, then I suggested to uh, Robert and Wayne that, that I have a chance to talk to each of you one on one. It's a chunk of time. I talk to each of you and sit down and start ever that discussion so we help draw some ideas out of you start thinking about what's on your mind between now and, and that one-on-one -on -one, my intent would be that you chat to each other chat to a neighbor chat to some citizens that you know and just what's that future needing to be how's it going to unfold what are those issues robert talked to me about uh talked about policing policing is being talked about Right across the country, it's not that we want to give it to police, but there's some services that other types of people can do differently than the police, whether it's mental health or whatever it may be. So that's an example. Healthcare, huge, right? Massive. Housing. I'm, I'm on Andrews Affordable Housing, and I can tell you what shocked me last term when we had new 12 new units in Anakinish County put up for affordable housing. We had about 85 people apply for 12 units. Most of them were 65 and above. Elder poverty like I've never seen before, right? We're talking to people like, that are struggling paying $600 a month every getting food. So the ones we got in there, I can tell you, they were grateful and we were happy to help them out. So housing's an example of what kind of future do we want to have? 
Right? We know there's people in this county that have three homes, right? It's not that we may change that, but how do we how do we help the vulnerable? Right? And I know I know enough of you well enough that there's a lot of uh, social justice ethic in, in the way that we need to think about how do we take care of people. So the thought would be you have one on ones, and then uh, <clears throat> we've got time held on the 17th of uh, February, uh, where we would come together for, um, oh, sorry, Fe February 17th, Brian wants me to talk about this senior staff. So we're going to do a similar exercise, as you, but they're going to hear what you guys had to say, because by then I'm going to have it summarized. And then I'm going to have a conversation with them, and whatever they say, I'm going to bring back to you guys. So you can at least hear what they think. You know your staff, it'd be nice to know what they think. Uh, and then they've asked me on the 27th of February, uh, they said, get, get to this, Frank, we want to get this done. They said, let's spend a couple of hours just starting to chew over what everybody said. Let's hear it. Let's sort of I'll get it up on the wall kind of thing, and we'll start to see if there's some commonalities, Randy, and what's, what's good. Right? You might see five things or eight things up there, and Randy might go, like those three. Well, the more of us like the same thing, the easier it is going to be to, to vision. Uh, and then, then we'll walk away from there, and then, They've asked me to come back on Saturday, March 11th, uh, for six hours. Okay, so a big chunk. Okay. And we're going to leave the room at the end of that day with the goal of having some vision for the next two years and some vision for the next number of years after that. Uh, that's what we're going to do. And then I'm going to type that up into a nice, tight, pretty document um, that hopefully a married team here has gone through this with me. So that we have we have some shared some shared vision, uh, and I've done a huge amount of this of finding agreements between people, uh, and just like our spouses or anybody that you have to do shared visioning with, uh, you need to be able to find the places that you agree, work through the things that you might disagree upon, and then land on something better together. So, feedback on that process. Anything you'd like to tweak? Yep, yeah, yeah, please. My question will merge up the thing that's merge break and go away. That's not probably fun. Is there any ability for a different acceptance? Because not every time we're going to spend more getting consensus as well as it is. I can really change the date. There's nothing uh, I aren't read the dates. I thought we could merge break in consideration, but it must be urgent. But, uh, I had my daughter home for March break and I went and negotiated with my wife who needs to be influenced if I could have Saturday with you. She said that's the first day you're supposed to be home with your daughter. She's 24. We agreed to give it up to be with you. So if you want to switch to the 25th, that was the second day. That the other day. That Robert uh, so how about this? Let, let Robert with Brian work out with me the date that works for you guys. Um, if it interferes with too many people, we'll find a date that works. Never will commit, we'll find a date that works, okay? And that's why the commercial budget may work for a lot more people. Right. Yeah, we'll we'll I'm, more, I'm more concerned about the process and like we'll get the date down. Uh, okay. Other feedback on what we're proposing? Okay, that's uh, I think that's it. We're doing this in a public session. So, you know, we always have a planning session every year. We get in on a business plan for the year. But it's important to be a public session, I think, and, and uh, to carry on that way because the public may have some points of view they want to express to us, whether it be uh, through our social media or whatever, what their ideas are. So they know we're doing this business process. We, it needs to be more than just us. We're representing our district. But if the public know we're doing this process, then they may think of things that we would never think of. It. Uh, you know, so our job is to bring those forward. Like you said, talk to your neighbor, talk to whoever. But it's very important to be a public process, I think, uh, because we uh, need to, you know, the, the public needs to tell us in some ways. If they, if they have some points of view, we need to hear those now. Before we set a plan and say, well, there's a plan. Why don't we share the you guys for coming up with the plan? I, I also think it's very important that the staff be involved, but that staff feedback is coming back to us. In the end of the day, it's us as counselors that have to make the decisions. 
council has or staff uh, has to administer those decisions. So we need to hear from them if what we're proposing is simply not doable. Uh, you know that uh, we don't have the staff to do this or that or whatever. So I think it's important that we have that uh, that staff input. Go ahead. Just a couple of questions. One, uh, you were saying okay. Into that meeting that we would have something for the next three uh, or next two years and then beyond, right? That's correct. So now, would you have made something out to turn to us? Okay, in, in two more years from the option happens that the new council comes on, gets a copy of what we were talking about, what we're going to do. No, they'll, they'll get access. See, when I do this process, I sort of respect confidentiality. So if you're having a one on one with me, somebody might say, Here's my top three ideas. I don't have to say that came from this person. So we'll have rough drafts of notes. We'll have what we've agreed upon. You'll finish your two years. The new council comes in. We'll find a way to present that information to your new council. And they're going to be the visionaries at that point. So hopefully if you've got good stuff, they're going to want to they're going to want to carry on with what you started. And also the uh, uh uh, oh yeah, we had a big conversation about things we start, and then they just seem to drift away. So we we'll be uh, going on stopping back to show you know, okay, we got to stick to it till you down there. Well, you know how council works. You know how your your Brian Cullen and his associated team. If you've got a vision that you want to see behind. I don't think you guys want to go through a process where you say this is the vision of what we'd like to see, and then everybody goes to sleep. Harry doesn't work that way, does it? Right? <laughs> right. So vision become a reality once the people behind it want to see it become a reality. And they're gonna have to work on it. You're gonna have to put some funds behind it. So the bigger the vision, the bigger the funds. Right? So I don't know what you want. I'm excited the chance you'd find out, right? But just like your year, you want to be a fancy swimming pool and a Porsche up front, well, you got to be willing to work for it, right? I'll just go, I'll just go to the shade tree, thank you. <laughs> Sometimes just a shade tree is a good way to go. Yeah, no, go ahead. No, it's, it's anyway, uh, I, I don't want to take up too much time tonight, but thank you, uh, Frank, for this uh, uh, first uh, introduction, I guess, to uh, and I don't want to shoot down strategic planning. I know Don has, but but I've been in a number of strategic plans where you spend so much time trying to come up with the wording, uh, you know, uh, the the vision or the wording of. Yeah, you know, I want us to really get down to the meat of it and say what is it we want for our county, and uh, you know how how then are we going to go about making that happen? Uh, and somebody uh, in our talk about this earlier, somebody said something about naval gazing or something. That's the last thing we want to do is be naval gazing. We want to be coming up with concrete uh, things that staff is on side with, uh, that hopefully our public's on side with. And instead of, we keep coming to council meetings for another two years and uh, do our duty type thing, but uh, I'd rather see us have a focus. Uh, and, and I think it's important to mention that, you know, we can't find another council. Uh, and we're not trying to. We, we, that here's a vision. And as a new council comes in in two years time and says, yeah, but we have we heard on the doorsteps different than what you heard a few years ago about the high speed internet. We heard something now new that we want to do, and that's fine. And they can keep what they want or what we have come up with, and, and maybe replace some of it or whatever. Uh, it's not to try and bind anybody. It's to try and have a long term vision that new councils coming in can then take or leave it. But uh, at least it's something there rather than what do we got to start with? What we got nothing. Anyway, that's just my own feelings. But is there any other questions or comments uh, for Frank tonight? Okay, and you will be in touch. Well, I have a couple of questions. Okay. Probably just might be for, for you or whoever's going to help. So, um, based on trying to get this moving and meet sort of certain deadlines, uh, it's Monday the 13th, Tuesday the 14th, Wednesday the 15th. Um, it's when we'd like to host one on ones. Brian, how do we schedule them to cast like this? We're going to have some evening and some daytime, right? Because some evening, some, some evening, some evening, some daytime. Yeah. daytime. What's the easiest way for me to schedule that with you? I mean, I can leave a piece of paper on here and you can write your, your name down as you go to the room or 
Sure. Gene and coordinate between us and send yeah. emails so I can get a time slot. So yeah. still I'll send that out tonight and, uh, and then uh, coordinate the meetings. Yeah, I'll send it out. And look, if it makes sense that somebody um, can't fit those three days uh, for whatever reason, then I'll find a way to connect up with that individual that's on a different time uh, so that we can follow the process. Will you be doing those interviews here, right? Uh, face to face is what I've been asked to do. Here yeah, in this building. Uh, that's the yeah. idea. Yeah. I want to try to talk to you over the Zoom if we don't meet, right? Yeah. Out the telephone. That's a good way to talk to you. On the phone? Yeah, I don't like what you're saying. I'll hang up, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have to remember. I'm the one doing the listening. So if I don't like what you're saying, <laughs> I'm going to keep listening because <laughs> it's not my. It's not my um, my job, obviously, in this process to uh, my job is to listen. My job is a little bit, let's say I'm talking to you, the sixth person. I might say, you know, interesting you're saying that. A couple of your peers have said this, and we might build upon it in that conversation. I want to leave two things. I'm not going to leave them with you, but I want to give you the example of this, and then I'll close. This guy I brought to Nova Scotia uh, back in 2008, his name's Jonathan Port. Um, he's a sustainable development, climate change, environmental uh, needs, one of the biggest organizations in the United Kingdom uh, on what the world needs to look like. He wrote this book a number of years ago. He was so tired of hearing all the negative news and David the skeptic that he, he got together with some of the brightest minds that he could find. And he said he wrote a book called The World We Made. So he predicted what the world could look like in 2050. Try to get some people inspired. It's pretty cool. Uh, I say his name was Jonathan Port. P O R T. P O R I T T. And he's with an organization called Form for the Future. It's a form of leaders trying to help look at the future. And it's interesting that Brian said something about land tonight. I purchased this book because I'm, I'm involved in a lot of my work with human mindset, the way we think, and our well being. And this particular chap wrote a book called Restorative Practices of Well-Being. So how do you take care of yourself? How do you take care of others? And how do you take care of the natural world? And what they put together here was 300 ideas that have been around since the beginning of time, what our ancestors and indigenous people did to take care of themselves, others, and the natural world so that we live well. Talk to Helen. It's got some really, really neat ideas that are visionary. And when you think about land, David, I think that's what they're talking about here, is how do we connect to land and water? Um, and what's that mean for our part of the world where people want to live and be healthy? So there's lots of things that I can flip your way um, before we even get to the face-to-face -face stuff. If you want to be reading some interesting things that people are thinking about. Uh, to get them inspired about how do we take care of our place. So there, if you want to hand that down here, that's uh, that's the questions for the one on one. And look, I have no problem with this. Years ago, I did a session uh, with Frank Sobies, and he just went like this. I don't want to answer that. He said, answer these three questions, and he answered the three. So if you want to come up with your own questions, I won't be insulted. Uh, but what I'm saying is, this could guide you before you touch any one on one. You don't like this? Come up with your own question, and we'll have a good chat. Frank, Frank did you send out the name of those two books to Swan and she can forward it? Yeah. Because I always find when somebody says a book by somebody, that time I did this from a long ago, I did yes. Yeah, I'll certainly do that. Oh. Thank you for your time tonight. Look forward to uh, the discussions. And, and for those of you that have spouses, or new friends, hope they influence you before they talk to me. I can still for calls. For those of you who are meeting on the evening of February 14th, they might not have a special so many Well, that's why we can make sure we don't do the 14th if you want to be home with your spouse. <laughs> My clients here. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, so I think as we jump back and forth here, I think we covered everything now down to the uh, number of pre-clearing uh, regulations. Uh, Deputy Ward Mark.
Thank you, Mr. Warren. Uh, I put this on the agenda because we talked to them beyond the so much of what Aaron and the kids were about or interrupts and stuff. Some people were going for two or three weeks or whatever. And they just kind of band aided it. They didn't really fix the problem. So the wind blows now, the power goes back over the past weekend. And when we're talking to the power corporation, they have a big problems it's not they want to cut the trees back further from what the right away says now but they can't do that unless the uh, it eats which you know the property owners so i was going to talk to them they also i guess i guess maybe do something out here brian that they want a list of all the roads in their areas that they feel that you feel that it should be trimmed and uh, send that in to the certain level of that during that time we said that Problem is, is they can't cut the trees down right away. So I suggested or asked them if we could do anything, if we could write the problems and ask them if they could make the right way wider, so this would alleviate all the easements. There would be thousands of easements, and uh, the problems could do look like they did. If we can, we like to go more than this or not. But just, I'd like to see a letter go to the province and ask them if they could make the right way wider to make it much easier. There's a power corporation to do the work to trim the trees to make it for power or feasible than what it is now. So that's the request, I guess, is that the right letter. Okay, I guess I'm at the period. Just on that, in order to get more right away, you don't have to buy from the rest of us. Right? Like you just can't, unless you expropriate it. If you expropriate it, you got to pay. Money for that too, so it's a big process. We do when we uh, realign the road or something like that. You have to go to the we have a right away it's an officer that goes around and buys that land, and then it's drawn on the plan, and then it's we'll registered with the registry deeds. So it's a big process. It's, it's costly process, and and a lot of in my area, in a lot of different places, you can't get too much more right away because the holes are so close to the road. So it is a problem. And I know that it's, it is in the feet. It is in the trees for the canola, for the most part. It wasn't the trees that were on the right of the trees that were on the property of the sheep. They're old trees that came down and took the lines out. But it, it is, and I think the problems would. Back and say it's too costly for yourself. Yeah, I kind of I think that's what they'll say, but I think it's worthwhile asking some process if they could keep on thinking with the lowest cost of power to see if something could be better for the grid. Thank you, Mr. Chair. When I brought this issue up, I mission a couple of weeks ago, and we were going to have a discussion with the lowest cost of power, and that was concerning cleaning up. Some trees they took down our properties, and I know some properties are left with a real mess. I'm not saying it's not a good idea to give more social power the chance to clear the lines. We know that has to be done during the clearing the lines, but at the same time, I'm not really comfortable um, without a lot of information. So what we're really looking to achieve here, be, other than tell people who want to take some of your property and let no social power take it over so they can clear the wires. I wouldn't be very comfortable doing that tonight, though. Thing, the whole picture and being able to talk to some of our residents who were like, in fact, I know it's like you it and I said, I'm fine because I just think it'd be your best you know, to clean up. So I'm just really worried about what we're getting into without having more knowledge. I thought we were going to have a meeting in Nova Scotia Town and much prefer for council to have that meeting to discuss things like this so we have a picture of what we're looking at and not just trying to make a decision without really knowing all of that. And this is couple of things I did say at the last meeting we were meeting with Elmer Swift Power and we did uh, about a week ago, I believe uh, they were on virtual and Wayne and Brian and I were there. Uh, and we did bring up uh, uh, what you would mention, Council was at the last meeting, uh, as I told you we would uh, have about the uh, stuff that's left underneath uh, the, you know, on people's properties and whatnot. So uh, he asked Brian to send out to counselors to give them, uh, if, if uh, 
we could in each of our districts say, well, where are these places in terms of civic numbers? If we got some particular areas, we want them to go to and clean up. And then you know, that, that way, at least they're going out. It would be not to go up of our going to the property that you know be cleaned up in your area. So that was one suggestion. Um, and you know, they're more than willing to meet with us as a council. So if we want to discuss this issue further uh, in terms of how it could be done. And stuff, uh, I, I sensed a lot more willingness the last time we met with them to work with us. And all along, the high speed internet project has been all kinds of holdups uh, with no switch of power. Uh, and they understand that now that we are being held up getting uh, I see internet to people in the county uh, because we were not getting the right, we're not getting the what's called the bank ratings from them. Uh, and so they did seem, for whatever reason, I'm not going to guess, more uh, willing to work with us. But we can invite them at a future meeting, uh, representatives know who are part of being here, to answer questions if we want power to stay on longer. You have to look at the reality that it's usually trees falling down on lines that cause most of the ravages. Uh, so again, the few of them are just plain cold. But uh, usually it's trees. So the more things we can do to facilitate the removal of all those trees, I'm going to cut people's new maintenance down in front of their house. But in the, a lot of places, it, it is trees that are privately owned, but uh, that could come down. Uh, but then destroying the look of the property, I've seen it done in right next to the Western Park. I'll put it way back. It uh, still looks fine, but it's uh, those trees aren't going to fall on the lines anymore. Go ahead, Joshua. I just thought that the plan was for council to be with them when we discussed that. that I, I didn't understand this was going to be the um, one in the Denver board and say, oh, I, I thought that was going to be a council meeting. There, there will be a council meeting too. But that, that initial one was more of a high speed internet. There will be a council meeting, but you know, we took the opportunity, as I told you, we do we could do at that meeting to ask them about cleaning up these properties. And that was the meeting. Before I said that, I didn't get it. I don't think it's got to get it. It has got to be up to the grill, and you'll have a chance to say, okay, there's the uh, between this civic number and that civic number, or whatever. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not comfortable agreeing to the letter of no. Yeah, I understand, I understand that, and we, we will have an opportunity. Uh, but uh, I want to take the rest of the questions for tonight before we plan on what we're going to do moving forward. Uh, go ahead. Uh, yeah. Okay. Did I miss you before? Right. Definitely before. Councilor uh, Thank you very much, Mr. Gordon. Um, yes, I understand that maybe the right of ways in talking to other people in one of the jurisdictions do in other states. And provinces do and how far is cut back from the power lines, maybe that's, you know, maybe what we have now is not adequate. I do think that's a huge thing to undertake though and dealing with property because people need to be compensated. Um, you know, I for one am dealing with um, concerns and complaints still on a weekly basis about Nova Scotia power. I don't know if anybody else is, um, you know, after Fiona, our power lines, it, in District 3 were decimated and we lose power when it's sunny and when it's rainy and when it's windy and when it's it's not just the wind and the rain. There's times there a couple of weeks ago we lost power uh, three times in one week. Um, I'm getting complaints from residents that lines are still not cut back. Um, there's a real issue with maintenance and right now in my opinion I feel that it's so far behind on maintenance and maintaining what, what's there now. To go ahead and expand that with giving um, even more um, land and, and uh, more trees to maintain, I, I don't think that's a good idea right now. Um, you know, there's, there's so many messes still to be cleaned up and, you know, some parts of our district looks like a war zone. What I can imagine a war zone look like with so many trees down and uprooted and, you know, you drive along and it's still heartbreaking and amazing. You know, it just amazes me how that storm and what took place. And I just feel that these lines still haven't been, some of them haven't been touched since they were initially touched back in October after the storm. There's a lot of work that needs to be done. I don't feel comfortable tonight voting uh, for a letter of support um, when, you know, 
we've seen so many outages and no maintenance has even been done for the majority of mines in our district uh, right now. And um, unfortunately, there is the residents that are suffering when we said, you know, it's going to be a mess in wintertime and it's, it's, it is. And, you know, it's, it's more rural residents that are um, being affected um, because they just haven't gone there yet to do the maintenance of the lines. So I understand, you know, where this could be headed, but I don't think we're there yet. So I won't be supporting. Peter? Yeah, yeah, and as I said the last time uh, in, in Hillside, I have been asked them for a couple of years to get the lines cut, and this year they've done it, and they kept going after the uh, the, the frail and the tool. They they uh, and they they did a really good job. Uh, Chance our road right down to the cut bridge, and they just took it right down to nothing. But they told me when I talked to them at, at, at the uh, when they were cutting, they told me they could back forty feet. That they had the right away for dust. They told me I was trolling off the dust, but they told me, and they took everything and going down the rain road. She's she back for 40 feet. They took her away back. But I, I don't know. I think there is a need to have a mayor in front of us and uh, get back. So, yes, and John, uh, we want, and I certainly agree with people that it's a mess, and it is our friend to see in many of our forest areas and don't have to go far around the road to see it. Uh, and when you get far out the road, you'll see even worse thing. But um, so we got two things we're dealing with. We got the immediate, let's get this area cleaned up, let's get it look better. We can't replace those trees, it's going to take 50, 60, 70 years. But we can make, get it cleaned up so it looks better. But we also have to look to the future and say, you know, how, how are we going to try and make it better next time? They talk about hardening the grid, that's their term, hardening the grid. I asked the other day, you want to charge the grid, man, I didn't really get an answer other than the man cutting the trees down. Uh, there wasn't any wires that were going to break or something, you know, a power started to break when they were starting out tight. Uh, but uh, I think we need to look at the two, uh, but let, let's uh, allow us to set up a meeting with those who have power and have them here in the room. Sarah? Mr. Orvey just said an extra point to me. Yes, I think the maintenance of the lines is important, but to me, it's not only the trees, it's also the age of the infrastructure. Some of these simple reasons, a miracle how it's standing, I just haven't been replaced in, you know, 10, you know, I don't know, many, many years and are due to be, I don't know, looked at. Um, I don't know what the inspection process is like for that. So the trees are part of it. But it's also maintaining their infrastructure. And I think those two have to go hand in hand. Um, so, you know, this is a very broad discussion. And, and um, I just don't see it as a one sided issue. I should say. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor David Parker and Jeffrey Thank you, Mr. Warden. Uh, it's Councilor Palmer with a ban on it. This is not a simple issue. Um, Land ownership, whether you own 10,000 square feet and are house on it, whether you own 100 acres, uh, is a very, very sensitive issue to most people. Uh, I recall on those same as four years ago, I was approached by a contractor for the Grand SPI and was clearing, and I believe they did. They asked me in a signed document to allow them to take a few more trees than what they owned. They don't own the land, they don't own the right away. They have to come back and ask me again what's done that again. <coughs> Having said those things, if we don't move forward, there may have to be some kind of hybrid here because what applies to the uh, the you know, nice shade trees and so I plan is at that point it'll be old along their driveway or along their roadway. They plan to, you know, when their child started school when their loved one passed away, da da da. That's a different story than the brush and forced one into a large piece of land. <clears throat> but we have to find a solution because those poplar trees that grew over and they were substantially popular will have regrown to a size tall enough in about 20 to 25 years. They will regrown to the point where they could then 
smash them on the game. I don't know when the next hurricane's coming, but I do believe it's coming. And I do believe we were like hard in the grade. That's it. That's just that's it. Okay. And if that means clearing a white red red, well, now we're talking about something. Okay. The question for me is how do we as a society work with the people that provide our energy to ensure that we have a reasonable, reliable grid? We just saw our trees to go off the side of well, over the next time there's a hurricane. Well, then, well, then well, definition of sand. Keep doing the same thing, expect different results. So as a society, we have to come. I'm not saying that we're going to do this on every road or under every power line, but certainly there's many. But I would be the better part of a month traveling around recording all the roads that need to have the wider, the railway widened. I think my district have a lot of roads, a lot of railroads. So th this is not a let's have a meeting to solve this. Particular. This is let's have a process working for us as a society. How we can help protect our infrastructure. Okay, yeah, they own it, but they're in charge of maintaining it. We pay them to do that. But if we don't come up with a solution, uh, well, the next time wind blows, we'll be in the narrative. Okay, uh, I'll come back to you on the second one. Thank you, Mr. Ford. Uh, I know that you're enough. I guess we're fortunate about the bottom line area, but Ford and spoke on it and waiting there just in the past and about how long we had to wait for the power commission to do something. About the polls, except for the case. <coughs> Logan knows, and Mike will be telling about it. And there's people with brand new houses that can't get into them because the power's not hooked up to them. And that's the people that are around. They got $400,000 house, and the power commission won't come to them. But I mean, you're here to this, right? So we, we got to get. I don't know. The priorities just seem to be changing everywhere. And I, if, if if any one of us had a brand new house and we did all everything right and everything was in power, then do it. It must be people desperately, desperately frustrated, and we're worried of right right now. And I've got three quarters of a mile of road front each of the bottom poles are on. It's not a tree meter, right? It's all like fields. Runs along the road. So there's places in, or lots of places in District 12, that they may cut a few more trees. But the, the job that the Power Commission contracted the fees was unreal, what they did out of District 12 in the last two years. It's unreal. And like I know it looks pretty rough when the machine goes and takes the tree halfway down, but they come along behind that. They finish her off or cut the, give the neighbor help to, or the people help get the tree down. But the whole problem is there's not enough people to do the work anymore. And a handful of people out of Stella can't do everything. That's why you're, I'm not sure you notice, you said oh, there's a power commission, you look at the door, that truck's not from tendered out truck from Quebec or way somewhere. But anyway, I just wanted to kind of get an order for the new homeowners of Texas County that can't get the power off. Okay, thank you. And here we are. We have a little lot more people that are building and uh, live in our county. We, we need them to get service. So let's get them here in the room and let's talk to them about the whole ring of issues. I'll turn it over to Jeff Ward. Thank you. Great discussion. This is what I wanted to see here happen, and I do want to hear Maybe we better wait until uh, our corporation comes in and there's some better avenues they can work on. So I would withdraw the request for that at this time. Okay, did we have, did we have a second? We did. Okay, uh, go ahead, Mary. We're doing a lot of talking about Nova Scotia Power, but I do agree with Chester that a lot of the trunks that you see along the road are trunks that are tendered out. And I think it was explained to me in the past that some of these trucks are not only up there 
that do move the lawn and taking the trees off the lawn. But they're also taking the trees that are in the shaded area so that it's preventing the black house from building up on the pavement is how it was explained. That's one of the things. But I think what we're trying to clear up is the mess that's left behind, regardless of who was doing the cutting. That's the problem. But then after listening to the discussion of everybody in here, I feel that we have a lot of issues that we should be discussing or bring to the table for no exclusion power. So I think I'd like to make a motion that we do bring them here and we discuss what we talked about this evening so that we can get all the concerns about the residents on the table, especially the one that Chester mentioned of how the people feel about what's not happening and what is happening. I'll second this. Okay, I'm working with the floor and then with the bike. I'll show the fire representatives. I, this is only my personal preference. I don't want other people. I'd rather have them here in person. Yes. Not on, on a virtual. Uh, it's better when you can look somebody in the eye, yes, uh, ask them some questions and some concerns. So if you could include that in your motion that they be here in person. Yeah, I think that. I'm going to be in chambers. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, so I think we're pretty well in agreement, probably, because that's coming from a lot of people tonight. You get them here in the room, and we'll have a list of these concerns, or we can ask additional ones too. But there are a lot of concerns, and this really affects our citizens, our residents. That's what, you know, you know, we're hearing people talk about that's what they're hearing. Well, they're hearing from men the same as I am. And there are some other things that they've done. I mentioned the area, and Chester and Peter mentioned areas. It's not all bad, but it needs to be uh, a lot better. Uh, we had tremendous problems with no good power on the high speed in that, but we still are. But they claim they're trying to help us, and I hope they are. But uh, so I think if there's no further questions on that one, I'll call for a vote uh, on the motion. Everybody clear what we're voting for? Is there anybody saying they're not? So all those in favor? Aye. Gaines? Motion carried. Okay, yes, it was a good discussion. We needed to have it on there. So let's move on to uh, Councilor Thompson, number 13, uh, the, the livable basic income. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Resolution, whereas the growing social crisis and impacts and poverty of downstream effects on our Davis Valley, putting unsustainable pressure on our limited resources to deliver necessary public services and social infrastructure supports as we struggle to keep up with the evolving needs of our community. Whereas basic, basic income addresses key social determinants of health, such as income and housing, it can alleviate pressures on municipalities to address poverty and fill gaps in social supports, such as shelter, housing, food security, and mental health. Research and pilots show that when people have a sufficient and secure income, their mental and physical health improves. They have the capacity to secure more affordable, suitable, and safe housing, child care, healthy food, and transportation, and poverty rates decrease. Whereas the provision of a guaranteed level basic income would benefit individuals, families, and communities at the most vulnerable in society, it would also support community resilience by facilitating the transition to a local economy that responds to the climate crisis and other major challenges. The evidence shows that a federally funded basic income that improves people's financial stability is possible as successful income transfer programs already exist in Canada for seniors, old age security and guaranteed income supplement, and for parents, Canada Child Benefit. Therefore, we resolve that the Council of the Municipality of Pitt County direct directs that a letter be written to the Prime Minister and Premier of Nova Scotia, Prime Minister of Canada and Premier of Nova Scotia, calling on these orders of government to work towards implementing a guaranteed livable basic income you know, to eradicate, eradicate poverty and homelessness and ensure everyone has sufficient income to meet the needs, their basic needs. Day the fifth of Nova Scotia was six day of February, 2023, moved by myself and seconded by Councilor Waterman. Okay, I'm going to say you heard the uh, motion on the livable basic income, moved and seconded. We did have a, a good uh, presentation here uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, from a couple uh, on, on this very topic as we had asked for more information. 
they took the game as far, lots more. Um, and it's a it's a big, big issue. Uh, but this motion calls for it not for us to solve it because we can't solve it. We don't have the authority if we did know how. But it calls for the two senior levels of government uh, to talk it out and to figure out how it would work. If that's not that it, you know, it's going to be easy, but uh, this letter calls for this council to support the idea of the details, but the idea of uh, a basic or livable basic income, I guess we're calling it. So I'll open the floor up for discussion on this now, Mary. During the presentation, I voiced my opinion, and this has been going on since over 40 years, and it doesn't seem like it's ever came to light. And without the information, I don't know who can decide who needs their income supplemented. What is the basic income? I am so struggling with this because you could be making $300,000 and still not making your ends meet, and you could be a person that's only making $20,000 and still not working. I, I don't know how they could decide who needs this money and how do you tell the people that you're going to be a group that's not going to get that? We all know that any money that comes provincially or federally, everybody wants a piece of the pie. And not everybody's going to get a piece of the pie. I will not be supporting this issue. I, I, I don't know. It's not a good for me. Okay. Uh, I guess, Madam Chair, I also will not be supporting this motion. I think that uh, I favor the, the procedure that our governments have been uh, doing, and that is charging segments of our society who are most in need. Um, Examples that are coming forward in recent years are increased with uh, child care support. Um, we have the dental program, which is now rolling out, and as soon we'll be hearing about primary care. I think that uh, it's much more effective to target those most in need as opposed to giving everyone um, the same amount of money. Uh, when we look at our workforce in the country, we know that there's over a million jobs vacant, and I, I do not think that this program would would address that particular need or concern, and probably would make it worse. So, for those reasons, I will not be supporting this motion. John, who can today see you over here, Larry? Go ahead, there. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I strongly support this motion. Um, as I said in the discussions we had uh, previously regarding this issue, this is a this is going to be a paradigm shift. It's going to change our economy for the better. Some of the points that were brought up are about is about uh, employment and In terms of employment, um, we always have a tendency to look at the employee, but I think we have to have a in terms of in terms of discussion. I think we have to have a look at employers as well. There's this is about a whole redistribution of wealth, and there's a concentration of wealth at the top, and it doesn't. If you listen to Ronald Reagan many many years ago on supply side economics. Wealth was supposed to flow down. Well, wealth doesn't flow down. Wealth stays at the top. And there's there's too many people suffering from food insecurity. Uh, they're, they're suffering from poverty. Uh, they're in precarious situations, these people. And we have to find ways to raise, raise their votes. Because when the time comes in, all boats are supposed to float, but not all boats float. The ones at the top float, the ones at the bottom sink. And we've got to find some way to change that. And a, a guaranteed basic income will do that. We have programs out there now on insurance, welfare. Those programs have been put in place to target all the specific problems that are, that are there. But the problems seem to be getting worse and worse and worse. So we have to come up with a with a system 
that will address the whole economic um, problems that we have in this country. And this is a system that will address it. It's a paradigm shift, as I said previously. It's a shift in the way that we think. Uh, it's a demand side economic solution as, a supply, as, as opposed to a supply side economic solution. It's a big problem like the, the award of spends. We certainly have to move in that direction and we have to think differently about finding solutions to the problems we have. And I think this basic guaranteed income will move our society in the proper direction and solve many of these problems. And so in, in, if it's the distribution of wealth that has to change. And uh, this is a tool that help, will help you distribute wealth. Thank you, uh, Larry and Councilor Dave Harder. Thank you, Warren Parker. Uh, I too strongly favor this resolution. I don't see it as a panacea that's going to solve all of our challenges, but it will relieve some of the worst poverty that we have. Will it cause people to be lazy? No, because of laziness or workaholics, or less people than that. Uh, we are halfway there now. Certainly in our indigenous communities, certainly with parents of young children, uh, and certainly with people 65 and older. <laughs> and we have found ways to claw that back if you're making too much income, uh, if you're deemed to have made too much income. So the, the mechanisms of it here are not challenging, They're really not. Uh, it's the moral principle. Do we want to help those who are in the most need in our society? Do we want to give them dignity? A warm place to sleep, a dry place to sleep. <laughs> the ability to go to some place other than the food bank, get their food. No, these are, this is about dignity and uh, uh, sharing our humanity. It's not, it's not an economic issue, it's a moral issue. We live in one of the richest countries in the world. Uh, we have demonstrated in the last few years that there in fact is an anthropology. And so we give more of it away. But where do you think that money goes? When they get that and right now for a, a single singer, the cutoff is about seventeen hundred a month. That's what we defined as a living wage. Um, within dates. Most of them are going back to the economy. They're not taking and putting it in a sock. Okay? They're buying fuel, trying to keep their modest home warm. They're buying fuel so they can go to town to get their groceries, or across town to get their groceries. <coughs> this is not a huge shift. It's just, the, it's really, I say, it's not an economic question, it's a moral question. Do you want to help those? Who are the most needy in our society? We can come up with all kinds of ways to tax something back so that we're not giving people that have lots of income money unnecessarily. I don't believe it'll make people lazy. If you look at people between 65 and 75 who are getting pensions, many of them are working too. Just enjoy one. Just say, what to make extra income? Da, 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 da. So I don't, I don't think it goes to that. All we're discussing here tonight. In my opinion, this is the principle, LE, of the matter. Do we want to reach out and help those who are most disadvantaged in our society? And my answer is a great big loud yes. Yep. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Warden. Um, I find, um, you know, that this has been talked about that it's it's about helping people and i agree i think we all need to help our residents and help one another and i think you know um, no matter what your income you know it, it feels good to help somebody but about big or small or sometimes it doesn't cost anything to help somebody um but i feel like one of our huge issues here is that the systems that we have in place are not working 
Um, we need a complete system overhaul of so many areas um, within our governments. Um, using seniors as examples, many of them have worked hard their whole lives and are, you know, paying into pension CPP and pension plans and different, um, you know, EI and these things their whole life. And then it's time that they retire and what they're receiving monthly is, you know, not enough to live on as it is right now. That to me, seeing what they paid in over their lifetime from working, a lot of, you know, uh, parents and, and within that generation, you know, started working at 16 and worked their whole lives and were lucky to retire at 65. Um, I just feel that those systems that we have in place need an overhaul um, before we start um, adding in new programs. Uh, I agree with Councillor Butler that there's so many job vacancies right now and we're having time, her time to, to fill positions. I mean, how many, you know, restaurants and, and, and such are, are, are not open their regular hours because they can't find somebody to, to come in and work and fill those, those shifts. The night of the presentation, there was talk about um, these meaningless jobs, and, and I thought a lot about that. That, that. that term was used a number of times that night. And it, it bothered me because they're not meaningless jobs. Just because somebody works at McDonald's or, you know, they work a minimum wage job, um, that's not a meaningless job. Those are jobs are part of our function to society and they may not be um, what, what you or I have dreamed our whole life, but those people might find those jobs fulfilling. Maybe they don't, but those jobs are still a function to society. And uh, I was, I was kind of, the more I thought about that night, the more it, it kind of bothered me. I don't really think there's meaningless jobs. I think no matter what tax bracket you're in, you can find your job unfulfilling or you can find uh, your job very fulfilling. And I think there's lots of meaningless jobs that make a lot of money. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not the, the people that are, you know, slinging their coffee for us and, and, and working hard and uh, for minimum wage. Um, so I, I'd like to, to make that point as well. Um, I think the, the working class um, is, 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 is struggling right now. Um, and I can understand with, with the amount of taxes and the amount of everything going up. And I can see the point where extra money coming into everyone would be helpful, but it's also, there's no such thing as free money with, with government. It, it, it comes from the people. And the reason it's, it's a, you say all the time, you know, you hear it so often, you know, we, it's, it's, it's the rich. They're not, they're not, um, we're not getting enough taxes from you. Well, it's, it's another system that needs to be overhauled. It's a tax system. Um, you know, they're not paying their share of taxes because our tax system is set up like that. Um, so this is such a big issue and such a deeper issue, but I just feel like it's a very nice idea but I don't know if it's if it's where we're at yet. I think there needs to be systems to be overhauled. I think that there's um, a lot of change that have to happen. And yes, I, I do agree with helping people and I love to help people. That's one of the reasons I'm a counselor. But is this the best way to do it moving forward? I'm not sure <coughs> um, I've made that leap yet. So, thank you. Thank you, Councilor Rudd. Chair. I fully support this motion. Um, and I'm going to echo the opinions from Councillor Chair and Councillor Farber. I certainly agree with what you're saying. Uh, for me, this is not creating the uh, living wage, uh, but it's pushing the level of the living wage. I heard that made this has been an issue that's been around since 50 years. Um, this, and I think Councillor Thompson made a good analogy that night. This is just trying to give it a little bit of a push of that bill no, to show the, the government, both federal government and the provincial government, that 
we don't see the social system working in this country. Um, um, welfare is not working. It's um, in a lot of cases, it's a generational problem. Um, the grandparents are on welfare, parents are on welfare, they're on welfare, just cycle is continuing. And studies have proven that if families a living wage they can live on, and you can, you can encourage them to educate themselves. I think mean, it all comes back to education and seeing where they, they can go in this world. And I think that's all I'm trying to do here is what we have, I don't think is working. I think we can do a lot better. And I think if COVID showed us anything, um, putting a few extra dollars in people's pockets did help a lot. Now, granted, they weren't able to work. They couldn't go out. They couldn't drive their cars. They didn't have to pay babysitters and homeschooling children, but that extra money they were taking in was put right back into our local economy. So I, I think it does show that um, a program like this has great potential. And this motion tonight is, is not going to give you the whole layout of what this program is. All it's doing is telling the federal and provincial government that we want to see this move forward and show that we're supporting this. And push that rock a little further. I, I can again say lots of comments that because that's all I see this motion do. Thank you. Thank you. And how it works. So, uh, both sides here, and, and, and it's something that uh, I think that, you know, has to be researched a lot. But I heard one presentation on it, and I, I agree. I really can't say one way or the other. I mean, because I don't know enough about it. Uh, you know, how's it going to work? Who's going to get as they say? And but when you, you know, the, is it going to be something? If it was spelled out later and it showed us how it's going to work, and, and, and you know, we've seen how this is going to happen, and who's going to get this and who's going to get that, or whatever it works. Uh, you know, the way it is right now, I, I don't have enough information to support it and, and that's the only reason because I don't have enough information. Councilor Dura. Thank you. Well, listen to everybody you can just look at what you're thinking of yourself. And what I'm thinking is you open the back of an old fashioned clock and you look at all these logs in here and you write them around. Okay. All we're doing is sending a letter all but someday we could say, well, in 30 years or 10 years, or maybe even less, that we were one of those little cogs in the back of that great big clock that helped push this. And it doesn't matter. There's going to be 500 people or 1,000 municipalities in Canada, and they're not all going to support it, or they might, and they may not. It all depends on what influence they have. But it's just like an awful lot of other things that we do here. It goes away and it goes in a box or it goes in a pile. But if it ever happened, I'd like to be able to say that I helped somebody that did the thing. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to add that I've been doing a lot of reading and it is implemented in other places. But one of the things that were concerning to that, that I read was the UBI is not just for the people who don't have money. It's for the rich too. They get the money. And we also know that when the government spends a certain amount of large amount of monies, they cut into things. And in other countries, especially Europe, one of the concerns that they had there is when large amount of monies like this are put into something like this, you lose something else. And what they were looking at was they took away disability of the like the sickness and some of the things that were implemented for the elderly. So yeah, you might gain something. But we do have things that work, and I don't believe that um, we need change. But I, I don't think this is it. I don't think this is one of the things that that we need here. Thank you. Okay, we're going to ask if anybody that hasn't spoken yet that wants to speak, uh, or we are getting uh, the nine o'clock hour anyway. Um, so uh, I think anybody that hasn't spoken yet, there, go ahead, Councilor Thompson. Thank you. Is anybody else spoken to make that last word? I want to say a few words, but I can say it before you. And uh, Wayne, if you want to say anything, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, I think this program is good. 
but it's a little premature. I think that we have other things, we have things in place now that maybe it's some council said has to be fixed first. And if we it said there in one of the letters that we'll put 85 million in Pickton County, 85 million in Pickton County to a help for health care in the A lot more than what it's going to do. Where is that money going to come from? There's going to be other things come to control. And right now I can't support that. It's a good program, but not this time. Okay, now, uh, is there anybody in Randy, did you want anything to say? Give me an opportunity to be there. You give me an opportunity. You're the only one that's had up around the on the panel. And I, and I spoke that night yeah. during the presentation, right? Everybody knew what my feelings were at that time. And by well, asked them a letter. It's not really going to do it. Either the government's going to do it or not. It's not going. We can send all the letters we want, but. It really comes down to government whether they want to do it or not. And if the funds are there, this year motion after they will vote, government's going to have to make a decision if they can afford it or not. We can't make that decision yet. So I, I don't see the harm in sending the letter. The, it's more, it's in the end, they're going to have to sit down, they're going to have to say, yeah, we can do it at this program, or if we keep this program, we'll get rid of that program. It's really up to them. And at the end, they're going to be the ones side with the whether the province, the provinces, and the country can do it. If they if you can't, then it's not going to be it. And I say, I'd lie with the federal provincial government, see, see what they come up with, and, and uh, go from there. Because he said, what you said here, Systems that are in place right now are, are not working. Right? But on the other hand, I've seen it happen during COVID and things like that, where people have to serve money or whatever, and they set home and, and, and did nothing. Right? And a lot of those people came back to it. I don't know what they're doing. And it did, and same with that money, like, it did not leave what they said in the meetings of jobs. No jobs. It doesn't matter what job you do. Some means. And I was kind of put up for that. But, you know, we need those people. We need people to do those jobs. And then those people take pride in what they do. So I was kind of put up the same start on that. That was, that made me think so. But after listening to the discussion and reading with the proclamation or the resolution, I'll probably support it just to say that it's in there. So. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I'll say my two percent towards the my counselor. I'm sure the issues out of here. Um, this is one I can look at and I can agree with these people and these people. And those are certainly good arguments on either side of this. But in the end, I just I come down similar to uh, Councilor Power. We're only sending a letter. Somebody has to work out all the details. What program she has dropped, what ones do you keep, uh, what's the right level, who should get it, who should, who has to use that, who doesn't. Somebody has to work out all those details, but on the subject of meaningless jobs, there's a lot of jobs in this county right now that go unfilled and it, it, it has nothing to do with COVID and nothing to do with uh, people don't want to do that kind of work anymore. Uh, I was in the vegetable business for the first 10 or 15 years of my career, and uh, at the first, uh, it was over on the you know, for every car we had. But at the end, by the end, around 85, uh, it was getting very, very difficult to get The first job I ever worked at, uh, Donna was sitting down here early on the lawn. It would be a big field of potatoes. A lot of people would be a big field of potatoes in those days. First job I ever worked at was. Uh, Pick the potatoes for all the dogs in Green Hill. And uh, it was hard work. You were you, bent over all day putting the potatoes in these buckets and filling the feed bags up and putting the feed bags in the basement of the house. You knew at the end of the day you work. But that work ethic is not with us anymore. Kind of, we have to bring in the different labor pretty well now. Valley brings in all the labor to pick the apples and everything else. The fish plant down here brings the different labor. So we don't have people to do that kind of work. Call it whatever you want. It is hard work. 
But uh, if you feel good at the end of the day, you know you've done a good job. Uh, but unfortunately, our society uh, has changed a lot, and it is hard to get people to do little jobs. And the same is happening with the restaurant jobs in a lot of them now. But I think that's a good enough reason to uh, to not somehow change the balance. We get more and more people that can take three or four trips around the world a year. They can have three trailers and four trucks and a whole lot of other people who, you know, are going to the food bank every day. Uh, and thank God we have the food banks and all kinds of other things. But uh, I, I'm on the board of my oldest place and I, I look at those people and say they, they'll never, ever, with the amount of money that the government's given them to get by on, ever be able to, the people that are trying to help them get into housing. The price housing, you know, they can't get to in the housing. Uh, there's just absolutely nothing they can afford. Uh, if we can help those people, out, the big one for me is mental health. I'm uh, a big fan of helping people with their mental health problems. And there's more and more of that around all the time. And it doesn't matter what level of income you're at. But we can help some people who that's their big stressor of income. Uh, if we can help those people with some of their mental health challenges, and it, it, it follows through to the next generations too, as much as anything else. Uh, so uh, my reasons for supporting this resolution uh, is because we need to pull some people up by the bootstraps, whatever you want to call it, and a lot of those people then will start helping themselves more. Uh, they'll be able to look at possibly taking some courses in community college, be able to look at some of the things in a, look at the whole world in a more positive way. So I, I think it's a good idea. I don't think we uh, ever come close to working out the details. Mr. Andy said that has to be done by others. But the idea of simply looking at a different way of doing something, uh, I think it's a good idea, so I will be supportive. Go ahead, Councilor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, good discussion here tonight. Uh, Members of the last meeting, the the Llewellyns, um, they're very learned people. They uh, they've they lived their life um, working on social justice issues for the United, United Church of Canada. Um, they lived in, in big cities and small towns. They've seen a lot of stuff. Everyone around this room was we all we all see. Um, we, live, we live in an area of the province that has some of the richest communities in the world, in, in Nova Scotia. And we, next door to them is, is some abject poverty. We live, we live together. We have to raise people up. Uh, my, my wife's grandfather, Vernon Moore, he passed away a couple of years ago. He's, very humble man, and he's very positive about life. And I remember having conversations with him. He finished school when he was 13 years old because he had to go to work. He had to look after his five, six siblings and his mother and his widow. Um, he said, You know, there's part of our society, it's, it's all backwards. He said, uh, when you need money, raising your family, trying to feed them, clothe them, educate them, you don't have enough. And then when you're retired, your house is paid off, your house is empty, your empty nesters, you don't need as much money. He says it's backwards. You need money and you're raising your family. And almost Poverty is it's not people. Only is a single parent woman, female, is less likely to have the ability to make ends meet than a man. I'm from the wrong side of town. So we talked about the generational poverty. So get out of that trap. Your grandparents, your parents. Same down to even some parents. Back in the 60s and 70s, education was on the street, post secondary education. We set our boomers up for life. We gave them the ability to make lots of money. 
that's not possible today in the same way. You have to you have two hard to wish it. Somebody wants to aspire, reach reach it above their lot in life. They have they have to go in deep depth for that. So some don't they say hard hard because I'll never get out of that debt. Never get that job I'm looking for. This is a way to even it out a little. This is a way to to uh, lift people up. Get it, get as we as we talked here tonight. We, this, we have a welfare track in this province. It's the way it's set up now. If you're on welfare and you want to work, you can penalize. They take, they grab back some of that money. So you're, you're, do I save almost my, my two kids and look after them, or do I go to work and not even break even? It's a crazy thought. Like none of us around this table, luckily, we don't have to deal with that, that decision every day. And what I'll say is I don't think it's a universal program. Guaranteed income supplement is not a universal program. It reaches the lowest of uh, income people, we saw that their uh, low income exemptions. We just passed the low income exemption here tonight. I don't know how some of these people live off that. Some of the numbers that shock me. So, I, and I just want to say that there's there's a Sustainable Development Goals that the United Nations General Assembly passed, and there's there's a little snapshot of it here. You get this online; it's on Engage Nova Scotia. And I'm just going to go through. There's 17 goals in total. Goal number one is no poverty. I can go through the whole thing, but sorry, right. <laughs> I won't do that. Zero. Goal two: zero hunger. Goal three. Good health and well being. Now, when you don't have enough money, you don't eat healthy. You don't eat healthy. And I think Councillor Water can attest to that to, to some of the clients that okay, go through the food bank. Quality education, uh, gender equality. And then the list goes on and on. But it hits a lot of those things. And and I think we you don't know, in the our county, one of the growth industries we have right now is food banks. And the usage of food banks and we, we see press releases about the expansion of food banks, the relocation of food banks, and the government investing money in food banks. I would like to eliminate food banks. And, but the program of this have that ability. Um, it's it, it it is uh I I I totally support this motion, this resolution I brought it forward, but um we gotta do something different. We talked about doing the same thing over and over again and getting the same result. What's that the definition of insanity? Well to continue down the same path we're in right now. Is the definition of insane. Thank you. Uh, let's move toward a vote then uh, on the uh, resolution. Can we have somebody read the uh, resolution back to us as Senate? Well, we have the whole thing here. <laughs> okay, it basically you know, support, this, uh, support this idea of the livable basic income or not. I got a feeling this is uh, fairly close. Uh, it could be like on both sides, and all we're you know, very sound arguments and everything, but uh, you know, we have to uh, make a decision whether to send this letter or not. So I, I'm going to call now for all those in favor of sending the letter to the higher levels of government. Uh, please raise your hand. And all those against, please raise your hand. A seven to five vote. Uh, the motion is passed. And we will send a letter to said all opinions. I think we're very well well spoken tonight and appreciate uh, that.
Uh, so let's go to uh, the last item. So the last two items have been on our agenda. The first one is community announcement. Announcement. Does anybody have any community announcements tonight? Go ahead, uh, Council Royals. Yeah, I, I just uh, in, in this regard, uh, especially in Lawrence, we'd like to really, really uh, thank uh, Evan Hano and and Jason. What is it? What is it? Uh, for um, people, especially in see figure that their actions going over and above saved a person's life this this, uh, this cold weather. So I really want to put a thank you from our district nine to them for doing that. And, and well deserved, uh, I think, uh, now's like Wells, when we consider how cold it was the other night. Uh, that lady would not have survived yeah. uh, by any uh, stretch of the imagination. So, uh, thank you, uh, Evan, and, and thanks to uh, Mr. Lebrecht. Uh, okay, okay. okay. Hey, we'll go with the case, uh, but now that, that was a job well done. It's a difficult one, I know, but it's a job well done. Uh, are there any other committee announcements? Uh, go ahead, Mary. This is on a sad note, and probably most of you are aware that we had structural fires within my district, and they lost everything they own, and it's family five, and it's close to my heart because I have those three children on the school bus, and I just want everybody to be aware that tomorrow is not a promise, and they're doing a GoFundMe for this family, and looking for any support that anyone can get for them, and I'd be grateful of that. We can kind of reach out and do what we can as an individual ourselves. Thanks. Thank you, Barry, and our thoughts are directed with the, the family and the community. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Councilor Butler, thank you. Yeah, Chair. After the three years of absence, the Elizabeth Wage Town Review Center Theaters is going to be held this year on March 3rd, 4th, and 5th. Tickets will go on sale on Saturday morning, the 18th of February. So, if anyone is interested, or if you can touch base with me. That's March the 3rd, 4th, and 5th. And it's the uh, concert that you put on in Lismore and Beale Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, you're, anybody here that's interested can see you for tickets. Okay. Very good. Down to one. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This is Donna Community Nelson, but uh, the property finance meeting a couple weeks ago. I asked everyone who had any kind of an outlet or distillery in your area to please send me along the name. I've got three responses. I think we do have more here. So if you wouldn't mind sending me off a quick email and the name of an outlet you have in your area or a distillery, anyone that sells bottles of alcohol, <laughs> we'll study with the map name. And uh, I'm not a restaurant, we don't want any of that. But farmers markets in here, I mean, we've got farmers markets set up where they. Uh, well, that's what we're, we're just trying to get our others of what is being sold. Thank you, Michelle. Okay, just there, uh, go ahead, Peter. Yeah, I just uh, forgot to say through the Hillside uh, community that uh, near the Hillside Hall, we're going to have a, a dance on uh, Saturday night at uh, a Valentine's dance from uh, uh, 9 to 1. And also, we have our uh, jam session every Friday night uh, from uh, 6.30 until 9. Okay, uh, thank you. Any other uh, in the announcements? I, I should mention uh, last week of the evening, uh, we had a, a meeting at the Durham Community Hall uh, to explain to people our high speed internet system as it's getting going now. And uh, how they how they apply for wireless, especially. But also questions on the uh, on on the fiber, and it was well attended. I think there were around 30 people there, and uh, good questions from a lot of different spread it around the room. They can help a lot for people to better understand. And there will be uh, a meeting this Thursday night, uh, 9th of February, uh, in River John at Legion. At the Legion. And it's uh, the uh, hosted uh, by uh, Sue Ann and Heather. Uh, Heather works with the uh, our wireless, or does our she's looking after getting people hooked up and answering their questions 
on, on the wireless part of the network, which is run directly by us as a municipality. And uh, so it will be going, I think, next after River John. I think the plan is to go to Hillside after that. Am I right? Uh, that's in two weeks' time after two weeks from the Niners. Or in our second, I should be guessing. But anyway, that's the next one. And uh, the, the plan is to hold these around our uh, different districts. Uh, give people an idea when well, when's this coming or when's this tower going to be working, when's that tower going to be working, and uh, how do we join up and what's the maintenance like and all the different questions that come up. So uh, we're, we're coming into that operational stage now and starting to hire the people that are going to be running the system and whatnot. So it's just important to know that those meetings will eventually get around all of our, uh, all of our districts. Okay, so if there's no other... Uh, yeah, okay. Well, Brian, Joe, Brian, do you want to make a, a public announcement about the uh, position? No. Uh, you know, I'll do it then. Uh, <laughs> I want to congratulate Sue Ann on, on being our uh, uh, replacement for Carolyn. I felt it. Uh, big shoes to fill, obviously. But if you can stick around for 40 years, it's going well. Uh, but uh, congratulations, and we look forward to, uh, to having we all wanted somebody in that position. So we're glad to have it officially in that position now, and, and therefore we will be advertising for uh, communications uh, further. Okay. Uh, go ahead, Captain Will we be notified which is going to be the meeting for? Wireless in our area. Oh, yes, yeah, so it'll be well mapped out ahead of time because I didn't know that there's one in Europe. Or... You go ahead. To that, right? So, what we're doing is trying to do around the backs of the towers should come in available type thing, like to your area. So, Durham Greenville is obviously one of the first ones. I know there's people in the Peters area that are already hooked up to Hardwood Hill. Uh, we're going to River John. The tower there is not specifically hooked up yet, it's close. Um, but we wanted to go to get a lot of questions coming from that area in particular. So if you want us, if you want us sooner than later, that's fine. We can go talk to you about what's potentially coming or we might get them in the Whatever the towers are raising, yeah. no sense of hitting people. I will still say, say it's, so. it's a lot more details and technically specifically information that was provided at the uh, rate payers meetings because Heather knows a lot more than I ever went on that side. So, so. I to ask questions of Tower and Pulse on the top. two people I know up that from the bell, they think it could be Pulse on. Just reason. So the report that I got on Friday is on that feed. We were following this now. The climbers were on site last week and this week, so they're finished. They should be ready either the end of this week or next week. Uh, so, therefore, uh, you know, so I'm going to arrange to, uh, to be out in your area or other uh, areas that are around there. I think the Eureka, or I think you correct me on that, that's in church, and they not Eureka, but uh, the, uh, that tower is it up to now, Eureka? One in Eureka? Uh, no. The only thing it's waiting on is the backhaul. Um, you can pick up from the other towers to backhaul. So I think it backhauls. Maybe to backhaul. So that one's really close as well. We have that one next time we get into this week. We should have half of them up at the end of this week or the next of the 14th and the other half, you know, probably a little less time, but we're somewhere in between there. But in some cases, it's all left for uh, no different than what Councilor Drew mentioned about getting power. Getting those shows power to come and run the line into the towers uh, has been a big problem, no different than the house. So, uh, but now, and, and kind of following up on what you had to say there, Councilor Palmer, that you, you didn't know it was in Durham, it should. We'll put it out as soon as we know that here's the next area where we're going to do everybody. So, if you'd like to go to another one, another area, that's fine. Go ahead. 
the other concern I have is remember when we had with the police wild and police uh, yeah so I was you turned that when I walked in the house and uh I have to leave calls in my area okay so I'm just saying the situation might happen if it does, we deal with that. Uh, yeah. I mean, we, we still have the meeting to know the area, so those who need to know what is going on. I don't know if I can do it. Thank you for sticking with us, ladies. Most people don't make it. Most people, other than the media person, most people don't make it that long. Uh, okay, yeah, now I, I understand that and I wondered that in the Durham one I did make a few calls and I, uh, uh, I knew there was some people that had questions and whatnot and, and I determined about myself to put up out the posters in some of the community stores and whatnot, just to let people know the me. I think we have to promote it a little bit, but yeah, you can't you lead the horse to walk as much as you can. Okay, John for what? Is it a proper feeding of that for the water spring? Yeah, so yes, it is because uh, um, there is, yeah, it, it, it can be multitude line of sight, but what follows, I know there are people that have reached out on the wireless side that in your district that have a direct okay. to so them. Yep. So, yeah. I'll chat with Heather tomorrow to get a good idea of what's where the areas are that she's getting the most interest from. She does keep tally of everybody in this call, and that's why we're going through talk. And I'll send an email and see if there's any interest for you. Okay. Okay, so we're down to uh, emergency resolutions. Uh, you know, I was contesting that does anybody have an emergency resolution? Okay, let's declare the meeting adjourned. <laughs> Okay. Here we go. Here we go.